the hell are you? A remnant of the time long past. There has been an awakening. It's the Riley and Kimmy Show. Have you felt it? Yeah, I, I have felt it. It's episode 427 of the Riley and Kimmy Show. I am your host, Patrick Riley. Right next to me is the person traveling in the uh, in the TARDIS. Uh, willingly. Kimmy! I got one knife! Kimmy! She seems nice. You don't. Just wait till you meet me. You'll find out I am as nice as Kimmy. Well, maybe not quite. Well, I am I am as nice as you, right? Hmm. But you know one thing I am not? What? I'm not as good a singer or dancer as you are. Ah, oh, funny. Yes, that is true. It is a Throwback Thursday episode. If you are listening the day this is uploaded, it is a Thursday. It's a Throwback Thursday. And what we have done, if you are a friend of ours on social media, you're linked to us. You'll already know this, but if you don't, go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com and you can see what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is I kicked off Thursday. Matter of fact, you know, Kimmy, I did not even waste a moment. It was exactly midnight Eastern Standard Time in the Riley and Kimmy Show studios. Taking a look at that big clock on the wall. You know, we have like all those multi-clocks that show all the different time zones. Sort of like in the old Mary Tyler Moore show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I saw it was midnight in our zone. I said, you know what? It's officially Thursday. It's a throwback Thursday time. So it's time for me to just post something and have a little fun. You had no idea that I was going to do this until just a few moments ago when sitting down in that chair. That's right. Aren't you happy that I keep everything i am the ultimate pack rat yes you are yes or as i like to call it collector mm. you know i am i'm sort of like the collector from the recent guardians of the galaxy and thor film you know that's me mm -hmm. except uh, i i'm not gonna have a problem like he did you know uh cosmo's not gonna be running around and and howard the duck's not gonna be making fun of me i guarantee that part mm. that's not gonna happen in my world but he and i kind of relate you mm -hmm. know I, i'm like mm -hmm. i like that guy matter of fact i should cosplay as him yeah yeah that, that's it i just need to find somebody to cosplay as uh you know i got a dog that could cosmo i need somebody to cosplay as uh howard the duck hmm, hmm. i think i know somebody who could do it mm. yeah i think the professor of cosplay could do howard the duck don't mm. you mm. he's already doing mr potato head for us but i think he could do howard the duck mm -hmm. yeah i dare you yeah i i triple dog dare you professor of cosplay to do howard the duck mm. <laughs> anyhow i wonder which character then you could do from guardians of the galaxy kimmy hmm hmm you are awful tall hmm and i do we do have a dog named rocket although we do have a dog named groot but you could you could go as groot i suppose right with, <laughs> with rocket yeah, funny. Okay, anyhow, are, you're not really happy with me, are you, that I made this video uh, public? Or, oh, no, it's just it's just great. Now, one of the things, as I said, I'm not as good as a dancer or singer as Kimmy. Let's just have a little sample of Kimmy's performance here. Here's the singing portion. <laughs> Yeah, enough of uh, Kimmy singing there with her uh, friends, her entourage there. Um, wow. First of all, it sure is different to listen to it without the video in front of you. I'll tell you that much. Isolating that. Uh, that. Boy. And, and anyhow, first of all, uh, the, the... You know, there's two other women singing with me. and uh, Sure there are. And it, mainly I hear the one. I hear you. I, I hear... No, you see, you're not... Uh, don't you try to hide here. Don't you try... First names, which one do you hear? First names? Yeah. Oh, Brenda. Oh, you think so? Oh, yeah. Now, Brenda is on the right of the video if you see, if you, I mean, you have to check this video out because Kimmy does dance in the video. She does dance. Her two friends are basically like uh, cardboard 
cutouts. You know, uh, they, they, they are, boy, they are wooden. I'll say that much in movement. And you do perform. You do a dance. Yep. Yes, you do. You get into the, the performance. Now, the lead singer is a near and dear friend of mine, a colleague. Uh, his name was Otis. He sounds great. Otis is on, on the mark. Now, one of the things I should point out is uh, this was at a radio station event. And I worked on the FM side of the radio station, and Otis was part of the AM side. The AM was an oldies station and had no listeners, by the way. Anyhow, just kidding. He, he had listeners. Uh, but Otis was part of this event, and I think it was a three-day event, not quite sure, at least a two-day event, if I remember right, at this certain location, and he was not shy. He loved to sing. He mm -hmm. loved to perform. And he had been, I don't know how many hours doing that because people would, customers or clients or listeners would come in and, you know, they'd be a little scared. And he'd go, hey, you know, you want somebody to sing with you? And, and he would do that. And uh, he wanted me to bring you to this event, to the station event. And so I did. And it was like the first, it was like one of the first times I had been around you. I had just met you. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a week maybe a month before this event not quite sure in time frame but it's real close you know mm -hmm. i just had met you now i'm smart when it comes to this part i knew that otis wanted me to sing that song mm -hmm. or be on stage with that i made sure i was nowhere to be found hmm. i made you can hear him you know asking where i am mm -hmm. and, and that's because I am back in the sound booth. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. back I'm back in the video uh, mix area. I went back there. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be part of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's just no way. I, first of all, I knew you well enough to, at the time to know that you were quite shy. Mm -hmm. And I could not imagine you doing this. And you kind of volunteered, I think, to do it, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is, could be a train wreck. And, you know, I mean... I, I just kind of wanted to be like back away from it, you know, the, the potential tornado coming down from the sky. But it wasn't. You you did have a good time mm -hmm. with it. and mm -hmm. But I don't know about your friends if they did. I think um, they, they were like stunned. Yeah, they were kind of looking forward to it. And I was like, at first I was like, oh. And then, and then I was I was like panicking and, and they were like looking forward to it. And then when we got up there, they were like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I just decided to break the ice and what yeah. the heck? Yeah, did you, know? you did you notice that? I mean, they, they were oh, yeah. they were like it's, wooden. It's kind of funny. Yeah, and it's like you, things switched. Yeah, and you you did that, and you know you are a dancer, even though you kind of laugh and joke about it. You you do have, you know, that ability. Some of us do not, and, and that's 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 me, <laughs> and, and some of us do like Kimmy. And it came out there. I think you actually had a, a very good time mm -hmm. with that. So check out our Throwback Thursday video. It is funny. It is meant to be laughed at, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. You know, get get a good laugh. If you yeah. need you need something to pick you up on a Thursday or any time you might be listening to this, just check it out. And it is from way back. I mean, it's from way back. Mm -hmm. It's from way back. They did have video though back then <laughs> yeah they did <laughs> yes yeah yes they did but it was from and they had color i'm surprised anyway it was way, i mean it was way way back i'm surprised <laughs> the thing didn't say i'm surprised it didn't say in technicolor <laughs> because it was so far back it was from it was from so long ago yeah mm -hmm. if i am i painting like it's from way, way back. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, way back. Mm -hmm. Like, it should be on Me TV or one of the retro TV channels. I mean, it's like way back. Mm -hmm. Like, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and Kimmy is kind of proud of that. And, uh, you know, any appearances we have in the near future, Kimmy, we will possibly have you sing and dance like that. You know, you could sing the new theme song to the Riley and Kimmy show. I think that's a good idea. New theme song? Yeah. Who's oh, writing that one? Oh, I am. Oh. You don't you don't trust me. <laughs> you do. Well, the reason I am as well, you know, I I put out the uh, SOS to uh, certain artists and musician friends, you know, saying, "Hey, you got the talent? We will share. All you have to do is contribute, and we will, you know, credit you mm -hmm. with that." And you know, I I threw that out to uh, some local artists who are very good friends for you know, like a logo design, 
And uh, I started doing that back in, oh, like November or so. And boy, let me look at the solicitations that they uh, they submitted. Uh, none. And then let me take a look at the uh, musician ones who uh, gave us uh, some uh, material, you know, theme song, intro. Uh-huh. Uh, none. Okay, so, you know, I, I figured, hey, why not just do it yourself? Do it yourself. You know, I, I'm, I'm, ado- I'm, a, I'm adopting the Robert Rodriguez school of oh, thought here. Oh, boy. Yeah, you know, give me that guitar and I'm ready to go. If he could do it, if Robert Rodriguez could do it for Sin City, why can't I? Uh-huh. Don't you agree? Uh-huh. I got a theme song in my... Now, I have designed logos before. That is true. And you know I have... For a business that mm-hmm. we had a long time ago. That's I, true. I did design the logo for that. That's true. I, you know what? I can do that. Mm-hmm. You know, but I know there are, you know, I know where my skill levels are, what they are. And there are some people that do this for a uh, a living, if you say. Uh, yeah, they, they do this for a living. And I thought, you know, one of them would step up to the plate, but they did not. But that's okay. So let's just see what the creativity can bring out that's right so i will do that and kimmy will do the song and dance maybe at one of our upcoming appearances right mm. what do you think kimmy oh uh, we'll see about that all right now moving to the phone lines let's go right to the riley and kimmy show phone lines hello hey this is the professor cosplay marco Mars, letting you know that i will be in the jacksonville comic collectible show on big meadows Road. This Saturday, my lineup will be Agent Coulson from S.H.I.E.L.D. with all my brand new Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gear. And I will be doing my iconic Penguin. And I will be doing a shoot with the Daredevil for Street Justice with Black Panther and Deadpool. So come out and see us here in Jacksonville for the political show. And as always, enjoy your cosplay and come out and see us. Then Marco Mines, Professor of Cosplay. It's our Professor of Cosplay, and it is always a joy to talk to him. And matter of fact, it is just a, I mean, it's a thrill to see him do his thing. And beautiful cosplay. Matter of fact, uh, he just recently had some professional uh, photographers do a photo shoot with him in downtown or historic, I should say, historic Deland. Beautiful shots. Uh, I will put some of those right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. And yes, he is loading up. He's loading up whatever transport he's using. I hope he's using. Some, I hope he's using a Star Trek teleporter that'll just teleport his stuff from Central Florida to Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I can't. You know, I have a hard enough time doing one cosplay at a show like MegaCon. I don't know how this guy does his stuff. I know it. I, I know that's why he's called the professor of cosplay because mm-hmm. he figures all those things out and he knows how to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's just simply amazing, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yes. It now, is. yes, he will be. He will be in Jacksonville, Florida. So, get out of Jacksonville. No, I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, King Kong's not coming to the city. No, I'm kidding. No, it'll be fun. You know, if you are in the Jacksonville area, it's something to really check out. And by the way, uh, I need to get, make this official here. Are we going to the event, Kimmy? Yes. Whoa! Yes! I'll be able to tell my good friend Ed Tucker from uh, Pop Culture Collectibles Retro Rama Show. Uh, he's going to this that uh, we will be going. I believe uh, we will be. Uh, stomping around on a Saturday, correct? Mm-hmm. So we're not like Marco. He's doing a two-day event. Mm. Uh, oh, he's hardcore. You know, yeah. and plus, you know, he can do that mm-hmm. because he's the professor of cosplay. Mm-hmm. Now, this is something to really check out. Now, the Comic Book Connection is putting this on the CBC. And from their Facebook page, something they say, just to give you an idea of this show. Now, I mean, in uh, 426 podcast, we talked about that this show is so big, by the way, that it takes up to 12 hours to set it up. Mm. It is just, That is just how huge this thing is. Mm-hmm. And to give you more of an idea, from their Facebook page, they report the following. Hey, everyone. Well, it's time to get ready for our Jacksonville CBC two-day comic book and toy show. Runs March 7th and 8th at the Ramada Inn on I-95 and Bay Meadows Road in Jacksonville. We have tons of new stuff, including all new 50 cent and up boxes, now, a question. What's the difference between a comic book dealer or a comic book collector dealer? The answer, the money you save when you come to a CBC show. It seems that 
collector dealers are in love with their stuff and can't let go, which will cost you a lot more money to buy your comic or toy from them. Good news, I don't collect. See you this weekend, Joe. That's right, and I've heard so many good things about Joe. We've actually uh, met him uh, a number of years ago in Orlando at a uh, collectible show that he did, and I picked up something there that was actually in very good condition, and it was kind of hard for me to find, and I've just heard very good things about him. Uh, One of the people that uh, spoke highly of him is Taylor, the owner of Nerdtropolis in Ormond Beach, Florida, the comic book show there. Our comic book store. Sorry, Taylor. Well, you actually have a show going on if you stop on by anytime. He's got something going on there. So it is a show at a comic book store. But uh, he, he speaks very highly of that. And that's something to uh, check out, which is the big comic book show happening, toy show as well, in Jacksonville. We'll be there. And we have links and information right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Over here is my comic book collection. Feel free to browse. There's a box of disposable reading gloves on the nightstand. Now, another place to uh, take a look at comic books is coming around the corner, and the Riley and Kimmy Show has been invited. We will be there. We'll have a booth. We'll have a table going on, and we definitely hope that you stop on by and say hi. And I have to also say hello to the promoter who invited us. That is Tom and Jake of the Daytona Beach Comic Book Toy Show. Get your calendar ready. That is happening June 7th of this year. Now, it will be a new, larger venue at the Embry-Riddle ICI Center, and that's happening at 601 South Clyde Morris Boulevard in Daytona Beach, Florida. And one of the things you can do is meet an artist that we had a good time uh, talking to, and I wish I had more time to talk to him uh, when we met him at the Deland Collectible Show that happened in January, and that is artist Austin Janowski. Now, Austin is going into his 21st year working in comics, his most recent work is a variant cover that Pablo Marcos, and that's you know, Pablo's work is beautiful as well. Pencil for Dynamite Entertainment's Red Sonja, issue number 100. And he started as an anchor working on indie comics like Vampire Erotica, Blood Hunter, Dragon's Bane, Students of the Unusual. He has done work in mainstream books like Iron Man, The End, X-Men Unlimited for Marvel, 10th Muse, also 10th Muse 800, God's Wars, and Judo Girl for Alias Comics. That is Blue Water Productions as well. And did work on Tomb Raider and Top Cow stuff and just tons of work. Also did lettering work on John Carpenter's Asylum for Storm King, Witch Girls and Witch Girls Tales, illustrated sketch cards for Vampirella, uh, that's one of my favorite characters, Red Sonja, The Avengers and Iron Man 3, and Wizards of Coast G.I. Joe, and illustrated a Donald Trump story for Cracked Magazine. Man, I forgot about Cracked Magazine. Remember them? Mm-hmm. They used to be like a rival to uh, Mad Magazine. Yeah. I suppose they still are. Mm-hmm. used to get that all the time. Now, Austin has also done some projects under his imprint, Tin Sky Studio, 7th Millennium, Tan, Stanley the Snowman, and his exciting new project, Divine Retribution. And it'll be great to uh, see Austin again. He... Uh, he has so many stories to tell mm-hmm. about the industry, uh, and he just has a unique perspective on things. Friendly individual, talented, beautiful work. Mm-hmm. And we were fortunate, maybe not for him, we were fortunate to be next to him at the Deland show. Oh, yes. And I have a feeling uh, he and his wife didn't like us. I, I just have that feeling. Don't you? No. Yeah, I think so. No. Oh, I do. I, I, yeah, I think so. I'm kidding, Austin. I'm teasing you. Uh, it was a good time, but actually, because you know, I uh, am a little chatterbox sometimes in events like this, and because of some of our people coming by, I didn't get a chance to interview him. And I set up an interview, and uh, you know, I did the old Johnny Carson thing. He got bumped. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately. And I hope he doesn't hold that against the Riley and Kimmy Show. I hope we can talk to Austin at this big event, which is happening in Daytona. And you can find out more information about that right on our website, which is RileyandKimmy.com. Now, I did not forget about Free Comic Book Day. Free Comic Book Day is happening on the first Saturday of May. And the Riley and Kimmy Show will be out and about for that. We have been invited. And I'll have more information about that in the very near future. Can't talk about it right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I've been... I've been you know, told to be quiet about it. Mm-hmm. So, but I will talk about that. Now, speaking of free comic book day, I know of a comic book store that kind of needs a little bit of help for those who are in central Florida, you know, and uh, if you're a cosplayer, an artist, uh, they're looking for some cosplayers and artists to swing on by their store for free comic book day. And that's Nerdtropolis in Ormond Beach, Florida. Uh, 
yeah, if you can help out, you can swing on by. It'll be a fun time, a fun event. Taylor uh, would love to have you there. And you can find out more by going to our website and just uh, click on the link to Nerdtropolis. They have a contact page right there. And contact Taylor. Say, hey, I heard Patrick Riley and Kimmy talking about that. And I uh, I can be there in costume. Or I can uh, I can bring my pad, paper, pencil, pens, marker, whatever, and I can be a drawer. <laughs> and so uh, you can help them out. And that's Nerdtropolis for free comic book day. That's something to uh, check out. And we have more information, as I said, right on our website, which is RileyandKimmy.com. You're probably quite old, so I'll, I'll speak up if you want me to. <laughs> that's right. Uh, you might need us to speak up if you have a hearing issue, especially with aging, you know. And some of our nerds are aging that listen to the Riley and Kimmy show. Now, Yahoo has a thing about how young are your ears did you know that as we age, we can no longer hear certain high-pitched noises as well as we did when we were younger? Now, there are sound frequencies that only young people can hear. This ear aging process can begin as early as 18. It's a result of natural aging of the cells in our ears, and it's unavoidable. However, if you've been good to your ears through the years, you may be able to detect frequencies that are young for your age. So we have a test on our website that kicks off with 8,000 hertz, which basically everybody should be able to hear. And if you can't hear it, uh, you've got a big problem. Mm. That one. Now, Kimmy took the test ahead of time. She could hear that one. 12,000 hertz is hard for anyone over 50 to hear. Could Kimmy hear that one? Mm-hmm. All right, and 15,000 hertz is difficult for anyone over 40 to hear. Could Kimmy hear that one? Uh, no. Oh, really? I could hear that one. Was it which one was it? I couldn't. I can't remember. You couldn't hear the 17,400 hertz. Oh, that one. That's the frequency only teenagers can hear. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and, I, and, I only the only one I couldn't hear was the last one. Right. That's the one that most people over 18 cannot Oh, detect. that one. Yeah. Yeah, that one that one I could not hear as well, but you can do the test right on our website at rileyandkimmy.com and you might be surprised. Now, you know, what's interesting, I've done I don't know how many con, um, concerts, you know, over the years and things and I always wear earplugs and I I get people make fun of me. Even you have but that's one of the reasons I do is to protect the hearing because of the industry I've worked in since I was 13 years old because of the radio and not the television part. But when you do the radio part, you have to wear headphones and you could damage your hearing big time. I've known many people who have damaged their hearing working in the industry. And when I started out, I was fortunate. I had a mentor, a couple of mentors that were very aware of that. And they're like, you know, you do not want to end up with hearing problems so they you know encourage not jacking up the volume and things like that and protecting my ears mm -hmm. so hopefully you know i don't have that bad of damage i know i know some friends and i won't name them right here you know them as well that do have problems mm. right now as we speak um and especially like one ear is like gone almost all the hearing and it's been traced to what they were exposed to in the industry working mm. also in music industry and clubs and things like that and you know in the studio I, one of them which is a good friend of ours uh i remember working with him and they had these these massive jbl speakers in the studio and he would crank those things just about as loud as they could go and then he had headphones that were very good at, the, at sennheisers at the time period very expensive very good and he would crank them all the way almost up you know, and just be jamming out, mm. and I, I'm, and he's paid the price. Mm. So that's uh, something to check out. So check out the hearing thing. We have that right on our website at rileyandkimmy.com. Oz, Oz, <laughs> that's just a fairy tale. It's best left on the bookshelves where it belongs. Well, to talk about Oz and fairy tales, one thing that comes to mind is Ron Baxley Jr., a good friend to the Riley and Kimmy show. Now, we're talking about certain events that are happening around in the area. As a matter of fact, we talked about the Jacksonville event that's going on this coming weekend. And if you're listening when the show's uploaded, that will be the, uh, let's see, Saturday the 7th and 8th, correct, Kimmy? Mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday, the uh, 7th and 8th. Is that mm -hmm. right? There we go. Now, our good friend, Oz author, Ron Baxley Jr., will be sharing a table along with Catherine Holt at an event, not the one we've talked about. Now, she is a photographer of the Old Land of Oz theme park, among other subjects, and that will be happening. They'll be together at Captain's Comic Expo by Captain's Comics and Toys in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, and that's happening Saturday, March 7th, and Sunday, March 8th, 
at the Shriners Building at Patriots Point. Now, we have been invited to that, but we cannot attend that because we have a prior commitment. Mm -hmm. Um, But I would love to go to that, and I hope it's a good time. And if Ron gets a chance, I hope he calls in to our studio line and uh, just talks about the show, tells us uh, you know how it is and, and what happened. Mm-hmm. Now, if you are in the area of South Carolina and can attend this, uh, we have a link right on our website for more information to uh, the convention. And I strongly urge you, especially if you love Wizard of Oz, and I can't imagine you not loving Wizard of Oz, can you? No. No, not at all. Now, if you love Wizard of Oz, I would suggest going to this convention because Ron, first of all, will talk your ear off about Wizard of Oz. He can answer, I think, just about any question about Wizard of Oz, for one thing. And he has fantastic books, an expanded universe of Oz that are available right there. And it might be great for family members. Yes, you know what? We got, uh, let's see, uh, Easter just around the corner. That's right. And St. Patty's Day. You got to get a gift for St. Patty's Day, don't you? Really? Well, it's St. Patrick's Day. You know, it's a big holiday for one of us here. Mm. I'm expecting my gift. Mm. Oh, really? Yes, I am. You know, uh, if if you don't give me a gift, Kimmy, for St. Patrick's Day, I am going to get out in storage. I'm going to remove it from storage. That certain leprechaun T-shirt that I have that you detest, and I will wear it everywhere you want me to go with you. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm I'm mean this now. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, me and the leprechaun will be with you. By the way, for those who uh are wondering what I'm talking about, I found in a budget bin, I think it was last year, a leprechaun What's he doing? He's Well, um I'll let you describe what he's doing. Well, he reminds me of one of your friends. Oh, really? In more ways than one and how, from the past. Oh, really? And why is that? Well, he's a, a little red-headed uh, leprechaun who uh, apparently has uh, over-celebrated, let's say. Oh, okay. And uh, he has a, a rainbow coming out of his mouth. Oh, you mean he's throwing up? Well. He's throwing up a rainbow. Y- yes. And you don't like that, do you? I find that t-shirt utterly the ugliest. Oh, I love it. It's got to be one of the ugliest t-shirts I've ever seen I'm, in my I life. I love it. I'm so proud I found it. I, I you know, I, I go back to that store at this time of year and I look for it again because I like to have more of them. Uh-huh. I like to wear it for a week of St. Patrick's Day. Uh-huh. Every day. You know, sort of like be like Gilligan, wear the same shirt every day. Uh-huh. It'd be like Charlie Brown, wear that one every day. Well... I may just have to take a little vacation that week somewhere else. I don't think so. I'm expecting my gift, Kimmy, and I, I, I know you won't let me down at all. Be sure to go to our website, RileyandKimmy.com. From there, you can find all kinds of nerd stories that go on around the clock. We keep you updated. The Yes, that's right. The website is updated constantly with nerd information, comic books, superheroes, films, TV, you name it. It's all pop culture escapism that you can find right there. And also our links to our social media pages. You friend us, follow us, like us. We do the same right back. That's RileyandKimmy.com. Find archive podcasts of The Riley and Kimmy Show at RileyandKimmy.com.